I mean, what has been the general response among people who, like it says here, that you're getting, uh, what your your sense of this is, is what has the general response been to, to Bolsonaro's decisions as of late regarding his, you know, maybe base of support that he may have had? Well, a lot of the rats are jumping ship. But keep in mind, a lot of people still think he's, are, there's a lot of people who are believing what he's saying about coronavirus not being that serious. He still has a base, you know, a base 20% of the Brazilian population, maybe of fanatical supporters right. who, who are bragging on social media about giving coronavirus to people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the, the traditionally kind of like cordial center right wing Brazilian middle class is turned on him. You know, the people who thought, well, anybody except the PT, Brazil would be in a much better. I'm not a huge fan of Fernando Haddad, who was Lula's replacement candidate for the presidency last year. But, you know, imagine the difference if we had a PhD, you know, university professor, economist with like 20 years of management experience running government in government. He was the education minister. During Lula's presidency, he was mayor of Sao Paulo. Imagine if we had someone like that who actually has some kind of like basic sense of empathy for fellow human beings in power instead of this maniac. I mean, the, the virus, a lot less people would die. And, and so what we see now is the same thing. I think it's the same thing that happened in, in Germany in the 1930s. So you had this business elite, you had this kind of liberal, center right or whatever, you know, educated professional class bourgeois who thought, well, Hitler's crazy, but it's better him than a socialist. You know, it's better than than a leftist taking over. So we'll just put him in power and then we'll get him out afterwards. Right. And you know what? They discovered that once a fascist gets his claws into power, it's not that easy to get rid of him. I think the U.S. Americans are going to see something similar happening with Trump. Yeah. You know, even though there's doesn't seem like there's any chance that the Democrats are going to win the election, they're so fucking incompetent. Yeah, but I think that this is the problem. So now we have a situation where there are these nightly national nationwide protests where everyone's banging on their pots and pans. And you know what? I think it takes more than that to get rid of a fascist. I don't think you can just do it by I mean, the pot and pan banging happened when Dilma Rousseff was impeached, but that's when all of the media and the right wing was on board with it. So they were playing that all up on them in the media and stuff, showing people banging pots and pans, blah, blah, blah. But I think it takes more than pots and pans. And I think what our best hope now, and it sounds terrible, but I think the best hope now is that the military will take him out. But the problem is he's backed by the CIA and the U.S. government and the Trump administration still. You know, so so now. The Chinese are trying to take, they're very upset with Bolsonaro. The rural landowner class, which is the most powerful political force in Brazil for the last 500 years, they've turned on Bolsonaro. The urban middle class has turned on Bolsonaro, but the U.S. is still backing them up. You know, so my hope is that maybe somehow the military can uh, help out and take him out and put Vice President Morão in power, who's also really bad, but he's better than better than Bolsonaro, you know. Yeah. So. Well, how would the military uh, take out a president? I mean, would it be a? F- I mean, it, that sounds like a coup. Uh, wouldn't that be something like a coup in that situation, or would it be something else? Is there some more formal? Well, there could be an imp- there could be an impeachment. There's impeachment oh, okay. papers being drafted, but. The president of Congress said, well, I don't want to I don't want to submit the impeachment process because it gives it's a jinx to House speakers. Every House speaker who's initiated an impeachment process in the last 30 years has ended up in jail, uh, including Eduardo Cunha, who initiated the process against Dilma Rousseff. But there's that that takes a while, you know. But there could also be some kind of a coup. You know, and. Who knows? The military are good at at causing accidents, you know. 
very good at causing accidents. I mean, they, I mean, they, they killed one former president in a car accident, made it look like a car accident. Just Selena Kubitschek. That's come out, you know, in the last couple of years. They were worried about him coming back to power. So who knows? I mean, I'm just speculating here, but so I think somebody's got to jump in and take him out. And I think Brazil's already blown its handling of the coronavirus crisis. I don't know what we can do now, but the, one of the worst things that could happen would be that you would directly insult China because China's like the one country that's sending, I mean, Cuba's helping out too, but like China's the major country that's like sending support everywhere, They're even sending support to Venezuela and Ecuador. And Bolsonaro's son publicly accused them of creating the virus in the laboratory and spreading it to, uh, to destroy capitalism last week and the Chinese government is furious with the Bolsonaro's now. I mean, you know how subtle Chinese diplomats are, mm -hmm. you know, and the Chinese culture, it's very subtle. And the Chinese ambassador basically said, um, you know, anything about the world or China, you know, you've got to stop acting like you're a spokesperson for the U S government in Brazil, or you're going to take a hard fall. Ooh. You know, coming from China, Chinese people are normally pretty subtle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, especially like diplomats and government officials, pretty subtle. Yeah. And they're very tightly connected to the rural landowners lobby, you know, because they're, they're the ones who buy most of Brazil's soy and beef. So we see this hybrid war, full spectrum war playing out in Brazil right now between the United States and China. Right. This douchebag, Larry Reuter from the New York Times, just wrote a newspaper column in a Brazilian newspaper. Now, he's a guy who wrote a front page story six months after Lula took office in 2003, saying that Lula's alcoholism was causing a major problem in Brazil, which was based on like one source from a senile 83 year old political rival of Lula's. And then it caused the markets to crash and all of this stuff. And he was almost kicked out of Brazil for that. So he's a he's a clown to begin with. So he just published out of the blue. He hasn't lived in Brazil in 10 years. This big article in Brazil's biggest newspaper talking about how it's a Chinese virus, how the Chinese did it. You should blame China for all of this, blah, 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 blah. It's like this is the battle going on in Brazil right now between China and, the, you know, this war between China and the U.S. China's finally admitted you know, they, they finally acknowledged that the U.S. is waging a full spectrum war against them. I mean, you can definitely see that going on. So Brazil's like the front lines of this in Latin America right now with Bolsonaro as the U.S.'s puppet ruler. You know, and China, like China just announced that it's going to come into the six northeastern states of Brazil that all voted for PT last year and help them fight the virus. And that's why Bolsonaro is trying to limit the powers of the governors right now.